Dr. Khaled Sarhan is the lecturer of anesthesia intensive care and the pain management in Cairo University in Egypt. And he's talked today about the challenges with minimally invasive lung surgery. Welcome, Dr. Khaled. Uh, good evening, all. Uh, I would like to thank Dr. Saad for uh, his enormous uh, support and uh, kind invitation um, uh, for uh, the Mega Online Association. Uh, thank you, Dr. Yasser, for the nice introduction. And uh, my topic today is uh, challenges with minimally invasive uh, thoracic surgery. To start with, uh, uh, the history of thoracoscopy dates back to 1910 by the Hans Christian Jacobius. Uh, he was a professor of medicine in Stockholm. Uh, Dr. Hans uh, used a cystoscope, a cystoscope sorry, for, uh, for intrapleural lysis of adhesions in uh, cases of management of uh, uh, TP. However, the revolution of the uh, video-assisted thoracoscopy uh, dates back to the late 90s. That's because the uh, surgeons was resisting to uh, initiate or to start using the uh, minimally invasive surgery and uh, also the um, uh, revolution of the uh, material and uh, the instruments they used, uh, this revolution makes it feasible to do uh, the video-assisted uh, thoracoscopy uh, easily nowadays. Now, the video-assisted thoracoscopy is considered a standard of care, uh, especially in treatment of early uh, non-small cell lung uh, carcinoma. Uh, uh, this is recommended by the American College of uh, Chest Physicians and the National Conference of Mons Cancer uh, Network and the European, European Society of uh, Medical and Oncology as well. This is a very long list of the diagnostic and therapeutic uh, uh, procedures that can be done by the video assisted thoracoscopy. So uh, much of us will be confronted with a, a patient uh, to be anesthetized for the video assisted thoracoscopy procedure. What are the, uh, the contraindications for uh, the video assisted thoracoscopy? We have an absolute contraindication like uh, uh, patients who are hemodynamically unstable or uh, the access to the video assisted thoracoscopy is difficult due to extensive adhesions of the pleural space or the prior uh, pleurodesis. We have also relative contraindications like inability to, to, uh, to tolerate the single lung ventilation, previous thoracotomy uh, radiotherapy for uh, malignancies, extensive pleural disease, and coagulopathy. The preoperative assessment and preparation for patients undergoing uh, video assisted thoracoscopy, uh, I will not uh, go in details. Uh, Dr. Amr uh, has uh, uh, discussed this issue uh, uh, in a very depth. But uh, to revise, they, we, we start with history and examination, then the SAA physical status, uh, then exercise tolerance, maybe about the six minute walk test and the assessment of the nutritional status, which is uh, uh, very important. Some investigations are uh, also uh, usually required. The chest X-ray, the CT chest, especially in patients undergoing lung reduction surgeries. Pulmonary function test as well is very important and the diffusion capacity for uh, 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 carbon monoxide. The risk assessment also, um, the revised cardiac risk uh, uh, index has been uh, modified for the patient undergoing thoracic surgeries, which is the Thoracic Revised Cardiac Risk Index. It consists of four parameters, history of ischemic heart disease, the patient, uh, if positive uh, history, he has 1.5 point, history of stroke or TIA, 1.5 points, and uh, serum creatinine more than 2 milligram per milliliter, and uh, pneumonectomy surgery, 1.5 point. If the patient has uh, a thoracic revised cardiac risk index more than two, or the patient uh, has a limited exercise tolerance, or the patient uh, um, having an existing cardiac condition requiring medication, the patient should have a cardiac consultation, including a non-invasive uh, testing. The pulmonary risk assessment, uh, however, we have no specific risk score for assessment of the post-operative pulmonary complications after uh, lung surgery. The RISCAT uh, uh, score can be used, but it's not specific uh, for patients undergoing uh, lung surgery. The next item is the operative optimization, how we should optimize a patient undergoing uh, video-assisted thoracoscopy. First, 
we have to stop uh, smoking for about four weeks uh, before surgery. This improves the post-operative uh, uh, morbidity and lengthen, uh, oh, sorry, and shorten the duration of a hospital uh, stay. The pulmonary and psychological rehabilitation, the pre-operative pulmonary uh, rehabilitation is very important, as Dr. Ram uh, mentioned before. Also, nutritional status uh, assessment and management. Uh, unfortunately, malnutrition incidence in patients undergoing uh, uh, lung cancer surgeries is about 40%, and it may reach up to 80% in patients uh, uh, undergoing esophageal cancer. So the ESPEN uh, uh, guidelines strongly recommend that patients uh, undergoing uh, um, cancer surgeries should have a good nutritional assessment, uh, also limiting the preoperative fasting time and uh, the preoperative carbohydrate loading as, uh, loading as a part of the enhanced recovery after surgery program, although the evidence is lacking in um, uh, thoracic surgeries. The next item is the airway management. We all know that one lung ventilation is strongly recommended during the video-assisted thoracoscopy surgery. Uh, the WMN tube is the cons considered the gold standard for one lung uh, uh, ventilation. That's because it is uh, uh, very easy to be uh, placed if the patient has a normal airway. We can suction and do bronchoscopy to the isolated lung. We can do CPAP for the operated lung, and we can alternate to either lung, uh, one lung ventilation when it is uh, uh, required. Also, we can uh, insert it blindly if, uh, even if the fiber optic is not available. However, we have some disadvantages using the double human uh, tube. First, we have uh, a limited sizes, so uh, not all patients can uh, be anesthetized, like uh, pediatrics, for example, less than eight uh, years, cannot be uh, um, ventilated using uh, a double human tube. Uh, also, uh, it is uh, difficult to be placed in patient with abnormal or distorted airway. It's not ideal for post-operative ventilation. We have a potential for airway uh, trauma because of the large size of the uh, tube. And also, there is a risk for intraoperative displacement, although it is less than the bronchial blockers. The uh, bronchial blockers, we have uh, here uh, many uh, types of bronchial blockers, like the going, the urn, uh, the univent uh, tube, the easy blocker, uh, the Fuji. Uh, uh, blocker. We have many uh, of the uh, uh, bronchial blockers uh, now uh, available. The advantages for the use of uh, the bronchial blocker is the same disadvantages of the WM tube because uh, that's, uh, that is uh, it is easy to select the size for uh, uh, the patient. We can uh, easily use it with the standard endophageal tube and we can uh, easy to place it in a patient with difficult airway. We can also use a selective blooper uh, lung uh, isolation, which is not possible using the double lumen tube, and post operative uh, ventilation using uh, the, the standard endotracheal tube is, uh, uh, can be done. The disadvantages we, uh, uh, it is uh, usually inserted uh, with uh, a higher time, uh, and the accurate position may, uh, may need uh, more time. Uh, fiber optic. Uh, use is very uh, important during the uh, bronchial blocker insertion. Uh, slow and incomplete lung collapse may occur. Suction is not possible uh, through the dependent lung. And uh, uh, bronchoscopy uh, of the isolated lung is also impossible. We, uh, we can uh, have a difficulty to uh, uh, alternate in the one lung ventilation to either lung. Uh, except uh, the easy blocker, which can uh, we can alternate uh, into uh, either uh, lung ventilation. This study uh, has been published in the Anesthesia and Adhesia 2009. Uh, they simply randomized uh, more than 100 patients into four uh, groups. Three uh, groups had. Uh, um, uh, thoracic surgery under uh, uh, the bronchial blockers, and one group had a double human uh, uh, tube as a standard group. And they found no uh, difference among the uh, uh, four groups in the quality of deflation of the lung. However, there, uh, there was a, uh, uh, a significant difference uh, in the time to insert the 
it was uh, at the time is shorter in the double lumen tube about 90 second mean uh, while in uh, the other the bronchial blocker it reaches up to uh, more than 20 uh, seconds for insertion also the number of displacement uh, and uh, the need for repositioning the bronchial blockers was higher in uh, uh, the bronchial blocker, blocker group compared to the uh, W tube. However, once they are inserted, they uh, were equally effective in uh, the ease uh, of the surgery and the quality of the uh, surgical fee. So we can use either the uh, W tube or the bronchial uh, blockers safely in patients undergoing PD assisted bronchoscopy. The vascular access and monitoring, uh, we also know the uh, uh, for any patient undergoing general anesthesia, the five basic monitoring are applied. Especially important, the neuromuscular blocker monitoring using the quantitative uh, uh, train of four. We uh, should have large white pore cannulae uh, to avoid the massive hemorrhage that now might occur during the uh, uh, lung deduction surgery, uh, for example. Uh, invasive blood pressure monitoring is uh, wide enough because we can continuously monitor the uh, blood pressure uh, uh, using the uh, invasive uh, monitor and we can continue the ABG sampling. Also, we can direct the fluid therapy using the uh, uh, invasive blood pressure uh, monitor. Central venous access is recommended if the patient has a difficult peripheral uh, uh, access or the patient has a, uh, a cardio uh, cardiovascular comorbidity uh, also uh, uh, in case of need of uh, vasoactive medications. The uh, neuromuscular blocking agents, especially, there is no benefit from uh, a deep blockade uh, uh, in a patient undergoing thoracic surgery. The moderate blockade is uh, reasonable. Uh, and uh, also, uh, again, the neuromuscular monitoring is mandatory. It's now a, a considered a guideline uh, by the Association of the Anatomists of uh, Great Britain and Ireland. And also, there is a consensus uh, statement on the perioperative use for uh, neuromuscular monitoring uh, uh, that was published in Anesthesia and Anesthesia 2018. The uh, uh, positioning, usually uh, the patient is, uh, uh, the surgery is done in the lateral diffubitus uh, position. So we have uh, to be uh, vigilant to uh, avoid displacement of uh, the airway devices and uh, the vascular cannulae inserted. We also we should avoid the nerve, uh, eye, and fissure injuries. Also, after uh, completion and uh, setting the uh, final position, we have to recheck the endotracheal tube uh, and lung isolation. TIVA versus inhalation. We all know that the volatile anesthetics, uh, anesthetics may inhibit the hypoxic pulmonary uh, vasoconstriction, which is a very important protective uh, mechanism against the uh, VQ mismatching that occurred during the uh, one lung ventilation. However, at one mac or less the, uh, uh, of the volatile anesthetic, there is no clinically relevant difference in oxygenation in comparison to the uh, total intravenous uh, anesthesia. On the other hand, the volatile anesthetics, uh, anesthetics uh, can decrease the local pulmonary inflammatory uh, uh, response. However, there is no effect on the perioperative morbidity or mortality when using the TIVA or the uh, inhalational methods. The intraoperative challenges during the one lung ventilation, we have two main uh, uh, challenges during the one lung ventilation intraoperatively. The first part is the uh, the first one is the intraoperative hypoxia, and the second one is the postoperative acute lung injury. So, how we can deal with uh, a patient having a hypoxia during one lung ventilation? We usually increase the FI2 to uh, one, and we recheck the position of the double lumen tube or the bronchial blocker, and we make sure that the patient hemodynamics are acceptable. Cardiac output is uh, optimal if cardiac output monitoring is. Uh, initiated, we can perform a recruitment maneuver to the ventilated uh, lung. Uh, uh, maybe uh, may, they may occur transient hypotension or worsening of hypoxemia. We also can uh, add B to adjust the PEEP if it is already added to the ventilated lung. We can apply CPAP 
of one to five centimeter of water to the non-ventilated lung. Also, we can uh, intermittently reinflate uh, the non-ventilated lung using recruitment maneuver. We can do also mechanical restriction of the blood flow of the non-ventilated lung by clamping the pulmonary artery of the non-ventilated uh, lung. And if it is uh, uh, worsened, we can assume the uh, uh, by lung ventilation if the hypoxia is not improved. The, uh, the uh, second uh, challenge uh, uh, is the post-operative acute lung injury. We have an incidence of 4 to 15 percent in patients undergoing lung resection. Uh, unfortunately, it, uh, the, uh, this high incidence was iatrogenically uh, induced uh, during the treatment or the prevention of intraoperative hypoxia using a higher FiO2 and larger tidal volume. So now it is recommended to use the, pro the protective lung strategy in order to decrease the incidence of acute lung injury. First, we have to maintain the FI2 as low as possible to maintain the SpO2 uh, at or more 90%. And as Dr. Antrim said, some patients can tolerate less than uh, uh, the 90%. That's depending on the patient uh, uh, history. Low tidal volumes also is very important at the uh, 4 to 6 milliliter per kg of the predicted body weight to maintain the uh, peak airway pressure less than 35 centimeter of water and adjustment of beep uh, 5 to 8 uh, centimeter of water but we have to be cautious in patients with uh, COPD, frequent recruitment maneuver and permissive hypercarbia but beware of the patient with uh, increased intracranial tension or having pulmonary uh, hypertension. Fluid therapy, to be restrictive or to be uh, uh, liberal during a flu the fluid therapy. They have found that the uh, liberal strategy is always uh, consistently associated with uh, post-operative acute uh, lung injury. So it is now recommended to restrict the intraoperative crystalloid administration in patients undergoing uh, thoracoscopic surgeries to less than six milliliter per kg per hour or to a maximum of one to two liter uh, as a total if there is no significant uh, blood loss. Also, it is important to maintain the total intravenous fluid that uh, given to the patient within the 24 hour to uh, uh, less than 20 milliliters per uh, kg. If we look at this uh, study that was published in the Journal of Thoracic and Cardiovascular uh, Surgery 2015, uh, they retrospectively uh, reviewed uh, 139 patients that uh, were divided into patients having post-operative pulmonary complication or uh, not having pulmonary complication. And pulmonary com complications was uh, defined as uh, uh, re-intubation, uh, respiratory failure, pneumonia, uh, uh, and uh, atelectasis. Those were the uh, post-operative uh, pulmonary complication. If we look at the uh, the total amount of the infused fluid, we will find that the patient having the pulmonary complication had uh, uh, about two and a half liters, uh, plus or minus one and a half liter, while the patient without pulmonary complication had a less uh, a total volume uh, uh, infused. Also, the infusion rate was higher in the patient having uh, pulmonary complication. If we look at this graph, on the y-axis, we have the pulmonary complication incidence, and on the uh, x-axis, we have the flow rate of uh, the uh, fluid given, we will uh, uh, notice that there is a significant increase in the uh, pulmonary complication rate when the uh, uh, the, the intraoperative fluid and uh, thorax registry will find that the intraoperative crystalloids more than six to uh, six milliliter per kg per hour. Uh, is one of the uh, uh, major independent predictors of uh, post-operative uh, pulmonary complication. So how can we guide the fluid therapy in patients undergoing uh, uh, thoracic surgery? The goal-directed therapy using the dynamic indices like the pulse pressure variation, stroke volume variation, is uh, maybe beneficial in uh, the uh, fluid management uh, of patients undergoing video-assisted thoracoscopy. But we have to be uh, careful uh, for the limitation of the uh, goal-directed therapy parameter. 
uh, first because the data concerning the um, use of the dynamic indices in the thoracic surgery is uh, uh, scarce and heterogeneous, so we can not conclude with uh, strong evidence that they may be beneficial or not. Uh, the small tidal volume that is used, we, we, we use uh, the small tidal volume uh, less than 8 milliliter per kg. This might, might decrease the sensitivity of uh, the goal-directed therapy uh, dynamic indices. However, the tidal volume challenge test could uh, um, uh, help in uh, decreasing the, uh, or uh, increasing, sorry, the sensitivity of these tests. Uh, the low lung compliance and open chest condition in case of conversion to open uh, surgeries. Uh, also, we should notice that the fluid responsiveness uh, does not mean that necessarily that the patient is truly hypovolemic. Uh, maybe the decrease in the vascular tone and decrease in the capacitance of the venous system uh, lead to uh, the uh, occurrence of the fluid responsiveness. In this study published in the uh, Anesthesia and Analgesia, we uh, found that uh, they found that uh, the stroke volume variation and pulse pressure variation uh, was uh, poorly sensitive to detect the fluid responsiveness during uh, the, the thoracic surgery. However, in 2020, the British Journal of Anesthesia published this uh, study about the impact of goal directed therapy on the major morbidity and mortality after the uh, thoracic surgery, uh, thoracic esophagectomies, uh, and uh, they found that. The patient that uh, used uh, the goal-directed therapy in fluid management have the uh, uh, a higher instance not to have a uh, 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 higher instance to survive and not to have a major uh, morbidity or uh, mortality rather than the patient having the classic or the control group. So the uh, goal-directed therapy uh, using the dynamic indices may be feasible, uh, but we are looking for more evidence. The perioperative vein management, the video assisted thoracoscopy, we all know that it is associated with less uh, or reduced immediate postoperative pain compared with the open thoracotomy. However, it has a still a high risk of chronic post surgical pain that may reach up to 60%. This is uh, due to the intercostal nerve damage and muscle damage uh, from the trooper insertion. So, uh, and this uh, higher incidence may be, fortunately, may be modified uh, with uh, aggressive uh, perioperative pain uh, management. So the locoregional uh, anesthesia is very important in enhancing recovery after the thoracoscopic surgery. And it, it may have a potential to reduce the incidence of lung cancer. However, the evidence also is uh, lacking. Uh, the thoracic epidural analgesia is considered the gold standard of pain management during the uh, thoracoscopic surgeries. However, the uh, paravertebral block, as Dr. Am said, is a good alternative to the epidural analgesia due to the uh, epidural uh, uh, major side effects. Also, there is a promising block like the intercostal nerve block, serratus anterior plane block, and erector spinae block that may be used uh, for uh, the uh, pain management together with uh, the uh, multimodal uh, uh, analgesia program. Okay, uh, let's see uh, uh, some of the technical consideration during the uh, lung resection. First, we can help the uh, surgeon to locate the uh, site of the lesion, especially when they are uh, small metastases or small lesions uh, on the surface of the lung, simply by doing the Valsalva maneuver. So. The uh, dependent lung and the mediastinum is elevated so that the uh, surgeon could uh, palpate the surface of the deflated lung and locate the uh, small uh, nodules. Also, we can uh, uh, we should consider the uh, good lung collapse for optimal uh, surgical visualization. This could be facilitated or enhanced by suctioning uh, through the corresponding lumen in the double lumen tube and uh, rechecking the position of the double human tube via the fiber optic or the, uh, the bronchial blocker via the fiber optic. Uh, also, we uh, may ask the surgeon to insufflate carbon dioxide reaching a maximum of 8 to 10 centimeter of water to avoid mediastinal compression. This may uh, facilitate or uh, uh, the uh, lung depletion. During vascular ligation, 
especially in nominectomy uh, procedures, right ventricular afterload in my trials uh, after main pulmonary artery uh, ligation. Uh, however, usually this uh, event is usually tolerated by most of patients. That's because the most of the blood uh, is shifted by the gravity to the dependent lung and also due to the hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. And once uh, 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 the uh, stoppage of the shunted blood, we all expect that uh, the oxygenation might imp uh, will improve, uh, and it usually typically improves after a ligation of the uh, pulmonary artery. During the bronchial ligation, the anesthesiologist is asked to inflate the lung to confirm that the only uh, the targeted loop uh, to be removed is deflated after uh, application of the surgical staple and before uh, uh, firing this uh, staple. So uh, uh, we can do a, a valsalva maneuver to inflate the lung. Also, we can directly visualize the bronchial stump using the fiber optic to confirm that the intended uh, loop uh, uh, is completely closed and that the non-targeted bronchi are uh, patent. Lung re-expansion at the end of the procedure, uh, we have to re-inflate all the atelectatic parts and we have to visualize uh, and check together with the surgeon there is no uh, air leak at the stable lines uh, or areas of dissection. Uh, uh, some of the technical advances of the uh, video-assisted thoracoscopy, what is called the non-intubated video-assisted thoracoscopy. Uh, non-intubated video-assisted thoracoscopy is selected uh, procedures of uh, uh, the video-assisted thoracoscopy that could be performed without general anesthesia, intubation, or lung isolation in spontaneously breathing patients, what is called tubeless video-assisted uh, uh, thoracoscopic surgeries. Indication usually they are simple uh, uh, maneuvers like uh, plural management of plural effusion, uh, empyema, pneumothorax, retained hemothorax, a biopsy from uh, the either the pleura or the lung. However, uh, resections have been done, uh, uh, have been reportedly uh, uh, done using the non-intubated video-assisted thoracoscopy, but uh, this usually in a, a highly specialized center um, uh, accustomed for these type of uh, surgeries. The advantages of the non-intubated video-assisted thoracoscopy is avoidance of airway trauma avoidance of ventilator dependent and endotracheal intubation, promoting the enhanced recovery after surgery and shorter hospital stay. However, it is contraindicated in hemodynamically unstable patients and high-risk patients, meaning uh, patients having significant arrhythmias, ischemias, and, all, uh, and so on. Uh, the non-cooperative patient, because it requires a high level uh, of uh, cooperation, extensive adhesions, difficult airway, long procedures, and any contraindication to the bland regional anesthetic technique. The anesthetic technique for the non-intubated video-assisted thoracoscopy usually is done under uh, epidural analgesia, which is the most commonly used, and supplemental sedation using dexmedetomidine infusion, rimifentanil, propofol infusion, or boluses. Sometimes laryngeal mask airway may be used for a brief period while maintaining a spontaneously ventilated uh, uh, patient. Also uh, reported cases of local anesthesia like uh, intercostal nerve block and pleural surface block plus or minus thoracic uh, vagus nerve block for simple uh, procedures like um, uh, pleural uh, effusion or pneumothorax management. However, the main risk is the difficulty to insert endotracheal tube if we are going to convert to do general anesthesia, uh, which uh, occurs in about 1% of uh, uh, the cases, while the patient is still in the lateral uh, position, which is uh, very difficult to uh, manage the airway uh, during uh, these uh, circumstances. Uh, usually, the emergency uh, conversion occurs when uh, there is a uh, uh, massive hemorrhage cardiac arrhythmias, over-sedation with loss of the uh, airway. The robotic-assisted thoracoscopic uh, surgery also uh, uh, is a part of the video-assisted thoracoscopy uh, surgeries. And the anesthetic challenge, uh, challenges are the same as the video-assisted 
thoracoscopic surgeries. However, the, uh, uh, usually we do lung isolation using the double human uh, tube uh, as in video assisted thoracoscopy. However, the, uh, because of the access to the head of the patient is limited by the robot uh, robotic uh, equipment, uh, the double human tube usually is incorporated with a video camera to uh, uh, visualize the uh, double human uh, site uh, continuously without the need to recheck the uh, position of the uh, double human tube. Also, to facilitate the lung collapse, the surgeon may be asked to use carbon dioxide insufflation of 8 to 10 millimeter uh, mercury. The neuromuscular blockade is very important at monitoring also to avoid any patient movement that may injure uh, uh, the patient by the robotic arm. And we have to be ready to uh, convert to open surgery when it is, uh, 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 there is a uh, massive hemorrhage, as we say, or uh, significant arrhythmias or even cardiac arrest. And thank you. Uh, Dr. Roy, is Dr. Yasser here? <coughs> Dr. Yasser, is you here? Uh, Dr. Harris, thank you very much for this uh, very, very nice specialized lecture tonight. And uh, from, uh, I don't know, is there only one question here from Dr. Basma? Dr. Basma, is uh, passive leg raise test used as a fluid response test in intraoperatively? Yes, uh, passive leg raising is, um, can be used, but uh, the uh, situation while the patient is um, uh, in the lateral detubitus status is uh, not possible to be uh, uh, used in such circumstances. However, it can be used if the patient is uh, supine and it is feasible, feasible to elevate the, uh, the patient uh, legs uh, without uh, interfering with the uh, uh, surgeons. However, I do recommend uh, the, to use the uh, mini fluid challenge test or the fluid challenge test. It will be uh, easier uh, for us to uh, check for uh, the uh, uh, dynamic uh, indices uh, rather than the use of the uh, leg elevations. Actually, there's another question from my colleague here in Ireland, Dr. Mahfouz Sarabi. Any experience with Viva site uh, W tube? No, I have no experience with it. I have uh, okay. the conventional the double conventional double human tube. Even the bronchial blockers, we don't use it much in uh, here in Egypt. Uh, I don't know uh, what about the England, but uh, okay. uh, we have no uh, good experience. In, uh, okay. In uh, on behalf of uh, all my colleagues, I would like to thank you for this excellent lecture, and I believe it will be a very good comprehensive review for minimally invasive uh, challenges for minimally invasive uh, lung surgery. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Khaled.